Okay, so MCP or model context protocol is great in theory, but in practice, well, not so much. In fact, there's a new blog post from Entropic which shows that it has probably been the wrong abstract for agents. I have previously talked about security issues related to MCPs, but there is a bigger problem. And it all boils down to context management. MCPs are pretty bad at it. So here is a quick example. Right now, we have only two different MCPs connected. But if we look at the context, it's already taking almost 20,000 tokens, which is about 10% of the context. Now, it's just the tool definition. We haven't even sent a single message. So using MCP servers are contributing a lot to context rot. But there is actually more. When a tool gets called, the intermediate results are also sent to the context of your LLM or agent. And you can easily see that the context management becomes a nightmare. So in this blog post, a code execution with MCP, building more efficient agents, Entropic is highlighting these two problems. Tool definitions overload the context window, and then intermediate tool results consume additional tokens. So for example, here is a tool definition. Now, depending on how many tools are connected to the MCPs, all of them are going to be loaded to the context of your agent. And that bloats your context. And this is even before you do anything meaningful. Similarly, if a tool is executed, again, it's going to bring in the tool results and the intermediate results, which may or may not be needed at all. This again is going to bloat or poison your context. So as an example, they have that if you have a two hours sales meeting, you are looking at about 50,000 additional tokens just by reading that transcript that is going to be returned by a tool. You don't probably need that at all. Now, the solution is not to directly use tools through MCP, but rather build code agents that are going to interact with these tools independently through code. There is an earlier paper, Executable Code Actions Elicit Better LLM Agents. Anthropic didn't cite this paper, but the idea is very similar. There's also a very interesting work from Cloudflare, Code Mode, The Better Way to Use MCP. And in here, they say that most agents today use MCP by directly exposing the tool to LLM. We tried something different, convert MCP tools into TypeScript API, and then ask an LLM to write code that called that API. Now, if you remember, within the MCP server, tools are basically wrappers around APIs. The idea is that it standardized them, but we were kind of going back now and we are creating these tool agents which are going to directly call these API or tools. Now, according to the Cloudflare team, they found the agents are able to handle many more tools and more complex tools when those tools are presented as TypeScript API rather than being directly called as tools the way MCP servers does. And especially it's more useful to use code agents if you have multiple different tools chained together. Okay, so how exactly do you do this? Well, in this case, you treat the tools as a directory structure. So every tool is going to be implemented in a separate file. And here I have tried to visualize that. So you have your AI agent, then this is your MCP server. Within the MCP server, you have different types of tools that are available. But if you look at this, this becomes a simple directory structure. Now your agent is going to generate code in order to call different tools. But the question is how exactly it's going to find a relevant tool. Well, give your agent simple bash tools and grip commands. So in this case, every tool definition is going to be implemented in a file. That just becomes your API call. And then you give your agent the ability to do code execution, very similar to what Cloud Code does. Now, Codex also uses a very similar approach. It uses a combination of bash and grip commands to do retrieval on code. So instead of putting all of the tool definitions in the context of the LLM, you basically search for the tools that are going to be needed, but you do that through code execution. So here is a simple workflow that I created. First, the user request comes in, right? Then it looks at the directory structure. It's going to try to find tools that are going to be relevant to this task. 
So instead of putting all the tool definitions in the context, we just do a simple search and find the most relevant tools in here. Then it writes code to execute those tools. Now the beauty is that you can concatenate multiple different tool calls, but the results are not being directly exposed into the context of the LLM yet, right? So you execute them if it needs to get information or data from external um, sources, you're going to be able to do those as well because these are just code execution. You get the data and you can do further processing on the data. Now, when everything is ready, you can just pass on the final results plus the tasks that were taken to the LLM or your AI agent. Now, this way, you'll be able to preserve the context of your LLM or agent without introducing too much noise into it. The Cloudflare team has built agents on Cloudflare following exactly the same pattern. So here is a quick overview of traditional MCP server. You have a number of different tools that are available, which the MCP server provides the tool schema, plus it's going to provide the definition. Now you first get the list of the tools, then the agent decide which tool to use, and it will provide specific instructions where the MCP server execute those tools. Now here's the architecture that the Cloudflare team recommends. So for traditional MCP servers, the MCP server provides the tool schema. Those are going to be passed on to the context of the agent, and then the agent will decide which tool to use. So it provides specific text sequences to invoke a certain MCP server. Again, this is basically pollutes the context, right? Now in the code mode, you have your tool schema, but instead of directly passing on the tool definition, you are going to create a list of different API calls. Now, Tropic recommends to do search based on model needs or the agent needs, but essentially, it will do search on which tools to use. Then it's going to write code to make those API calls. The agent worker is going to execute those. It's a separate sandbox, which is separate from the context of your model or agent. You get the results. Those results are sent back to the LLM. So all the execution and everything is happening within this dynamic isolate sandbox which is not rotting the context of your main agent. Now, there are some really great benefits to it. So the first one is progressive disclosure. So rather than putting everything, you are going to be looking at tool definitions on demand. And this results in much more efficient tool calls because again, you're not stuffing everything into the context of the model and the tool execution is happening in a separate sandbox. This also brings us to privacy preserving operations. Security is a big issue with MCPs, especially the tools from one MCP server can be invoked by another server. And also there is a system wide or system level access, right? Now on top of the results, even before sending it to the LLM. So one simple example that they have here is you can anonymize your data. Let's say if you have personally identifiable information, before you even sending that to an LLM, you can basically mask that when the agent writes code for it, and then you de-anonymize it. Another idea that they have is the state persistent and skills. Now, skills is this new concept recently introduced by Anthropic, which also progressively loads information rather than dumping everything all at once. Right. So you could potentially use these code agents to directly interact with. It. Now, what exactly does it mean for MCP servers? Uh, because essentially you are just replacing its purpose with code agents. Now, the Cloudflare team tried to answer this. So they say MCP is still useful because it's, it is uniform. So MCP is designed for tool calling, but it doesn't actually have to be used that way. The tools that MCP server exposes are really just an RPC interface with attached documentation. We don't really have to present them as tools. But does this mean we don't need MCPs anymore? The main benefit is that 
MCPs makes everything uniform. They were designed for tool calling, but you don't have to use them in that way. The tools in the MCP server exposes are just really RPC interface with attached documentation. And their idea is that you don't really need to present them as tools. You can just write APIs to directly interact with those tools. They say that it turns out MCP does something else that's really useful. It provides a uniform way to connect to and learn about an API. So an AI agent can use MCP server even if the agent's developer never heard of the particular MCP server and the MCP server's developer never heard of the particular agent. The idea is that you are going to be providing a unified or uniform API interface. Even if you're using the directory structure for tool calling using the code agent, you can still benefit from this uniform structure or uniform interface that MCP provides, especially if the agent is writing code. And therefore they say that we would like the AI agent to run in a sandbox such that it can only access the tools we give it. MCP makes it possible for agentic frameworks to implement this and by handling connectivity and authorization in the standard way, independent of the AI code. So that means the main benefit of MCP is going to be this uniform interface that it provides for the agent to interact with the tools or APIs via code. So we'll have to look at MCPs from a very different perspective moving forward. Again, if you are looking at MCP servers, don't just use them. Do let me know what you think and how your experience has been. In my personal experience, I have started using MCPs less and less specifically because of the context rot that it introduced. But this approach does seem to be able to reduce that. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. And as always, see you in the next one.